in today's discussion we are going to talk about how do we generate a wide band fm we have two specific methods the first one is the direct method and the second one is the indirect method previously we have discussed little bit about the direct method the indirect indirect method deals with the generation of narrow band fm first and using that narrow band fm then we would present the the ways or the methods in which we can generate a frequency or a wide band frequency modulated signal in the indirect or the armstrong method of generating wide band fm there are series of steps that we follow the important thing is that this method is stable so we don't have the issue of the carrier frequency which drifts as in the previous discussion of vco uh, or the direct method and it also gives us flexibility in the choice of electronic components like if we are given with a specific oscillator and if we are given with some specific nonlinear devices so we can construct a wide band fm by using an indirect method the first and foremost thing is actually generating a narrow band fm generation of narrow band fm is actually quite simple the fm modulated signal is a cos mega ct minus kf a of t a of t is simply uh, the integration of message signal and then it is multiplied by sin omega ct and all of this is basically expressed in terms of a block diagram now if we uh monitor the block diagram we can observe that we have a multiplier over here right and this multiplier or simply modulator is something that we have previously discussed and that is a double side band suppressed carrier over here so we have an input and then we multiply it with the carrier frequency omega c and then this is our multiplier unit and it's passed through amplifier or gain of kf at the same time the carrier is also fed into a summer and then it is amplified and we have g f m uh, or the frequency modulated signal which is narrow band so since over here we have double side band uh, suppressed carrier in our am aspect and at the same time we are feeding the summer with another carrier omega c so this in a way is very very similar to our discussion on the large carrier am with large carrier in the, our next discussion we will be talking about some of the steps that follows our first step remember the first this is our first step that is we generate a narrow band fm and from there on uh, after the generation uh, incorporate some new blocks to achieve a wide band fm uh, in the second step we induce hard limiter and a band pass filter the output of a narrow band filter a narrow band uh, modulator is fed into a hard limiter and the rationale for it why why do we need a hard limiter first if you observe this we have over here a cos omega ct minus kf a of t sin omega ct but in this expression we have a of t cos omega ct plus theta of t so basically these are equated in terms of envelope so if you observe the a of t the a of t is simply it's an envelope and that envelope is originating from here so we have something like under root a square plus b square while a is simply 1 and b is kf a of t right so we would have square so a square plus b square under root that is a of t now you can observe that a of t is dependent on time uh, therefore a is also dependent on time now so this is actually its amplitude is dependent on time so this is one concern another concern is regarding this angle theta of t so this is in fact 10 inverse b by a but in our case we have this thing as b which would repeat here as kf a of t so in this way this is also dependent on time now uh, the signal which is at the output of narrow band fm is both changing its amplitude 
with respect to time and the argument of a cost function specifically theta of t is also basically changing with respect to time so this is a big concern so how do we fix this concern so let us first try to fix a of t for that we employ a block which is called a hard limiter it's a very simple block what it does is it's just something like a signum function by signum function what we mean is that the output would be equal to 1 or it would be equal to minus 1 it would be equal to 1 when the cos of theta is greater than 0 that means if the cos function is positive we would have 1 and if this cos function is negative we would have minus 1 so that is cos theta is less than 0 so this is a simple definition of a signum function so we have v output over here which would be based on either plus 1 or minus 1 so this is also replicated over here these oscillations are the ones that we achieve out of the system design that delivers frequency modulated signal that is narrowband fm right so after passing through a hard limiter if it is above zero if it is the value is positive so it will become one and if the value is negative it will become minus one so we would have a series of rectangles based on the input signal now we have fixed one problem here you remember there are two issues the first issue is that the amplitude is now a function of time so using the hard limiter we have fixed it and we have just given a constant amplitude amplitude plus one and minus one the other issue is that cos omega ct plus theta t so this argument is also a function of time so if this is a function of time then we cannot see the periodicity of this one because the argument is a function of time for simplicity let us assume that we have a function which is cos of theta so in this scenario what we would have is we would have a time period of simply 2 pi and for this square wave we have uh, the trigonometric Fourier series in terms of 4 by pi cos theta minus 1 by 3 cos 3 theta plus 1 by 5 cos 5 theta plus so on so this is our fundamental harmonic uh, theta then 3 theta 5 theta and so on so once we achieve this one we will pass it through a band pass filter and the band pass filter what it would do is it would reject the higher harmonics this would be rejected and this would be passed so v naught after passing through the filter when pass filter of theta this would be simply 4 by pi cos of theta now remember initially the theta was a function of time but we conditioned it and we we just write it in terms of uh, v naught of theta so if we relax the condition and we get back the dependence on time so we would have v naught theta of t this would become 4 by pi cos theta of t right and we know that 4 by pi cos theta of t that would be equivalent to omega ct which is coming from here and then this theta of t so this theta of t if you compare it with uh, the function of fm it says that we have a cos omega ct plus kf minus infinity to t m of alpha d alpha so this is something that we'll get so if you observe here this is converted to 
this function and the conversion is based on the band pass filter right so 10 inverse kf a of t is converted to kf uh, integration of the message signal so omega ct is retained as itself because it passes through the band pass filter another important thing is the a of t which was time varying now it has a constant value of 4 by pi so the use of hard limiter cascaded with band pass filter has stabilized the output of narrow band fm so over here uh, i would just like to uh, comment one more thing that often the first step and the second step are combined together so we assume that whatever over here is at the output of narrow band fm it has generally passed through a hard limiter and a band pass filter right so these are the first two steps in the next step in the third step we'll be using multipliers and mixers remember what our initial discussion is that we need to generate wide band fm so in that as a first step we have generated a narrow band fm and stabilized it so in the third step we need to include some blocks over here which are going to convert the narrow band fm to a wide band fm and for that we have basically two blocks the first one is a multiplier and the second one is a mixer so in mixer so whatever over here is at the input we multiply it with a local oscillator the frequency of the local oscillator and based on the frequency of the local oscillator uh, x of f would be shifted that's what uh, is done over here that x of f is shifted to x of f minus f naught x of f plus f naught and of course we are using a band pass filter so this is something that we have used in you can say double side band suppressed carrier dsb se or uh, in am uh, a new thing over here is a multiplier so first thing is what is a multiplier so mu multiplier is basically a very simple thing it is a combination of two components the first component is called a non linear device while the second is a band pass filter again now what is the non linear device assuming we take an example of a device which squares the input signal so this is a squaring device so we have a for example a squaring device over here so consider that we have fm signal that is g f m of t that is equivalent to a cos omega c t plus k f let me call it alpha of t so if this passes through a squaring device so at the output we know that we would have a square by 2 plus a square by 2 cos uh, cos square theta is 1 by 2 plus 1 uh, by 2 cos 2 theta so we would have cos 2 omega ct plus 2 k f a of t so this means that the carrier frequency is doubled if we pass it through a squaring device right so at the same time this over here relates to our deviation frequency deviation so this is also doubled right so the frequency multiplier what it does is that it doubles the carrier frequency fc as well as it doubles or it doubles the frequency deviation now i have also expressed here a band pass filter so what it does is it would reject the unintended frequencies which in our case is uh, simply a dc value right so it would reject the dc value and we would be uh, getting a value at 2 mega cd plus this deviation it's a squaring device but what it does is it, it is just multiplying the carrier frequency by 2 so we could have a quadruple device that is the input to the power 4 or to the power 8 or to the power 16 and so on usually we call these as doublers so in frequency multipliers 
we have nonlinear devices followed by band pass filter and again to uh, review the carrier frequency if it is a n multiplier so it would be nfc at the same time the deviation it will be multiplied by n and it would be n delta f so compare this with the mixer that we have discussed previously so if there is a fc if we have fc so that will be converted to fc minus f naught and fc plus f naught but at the same time whatever the deviation is it would not be changed it would be similar it would be same so these are not changed so in multipliers both the, the carrier frequency as well as the deviation is multiplied by n whereas in the mixer only the carrier frequency is perturbed but not the frequency deviation so next in line we have one example uh, that we would consider in the generation of wideband fm and it is going to clear a, a number of concepts